it up right now. Just a heads up, I have a very excited dog. He's calm right now, but don't be shocked <laughs> if you hear a big bark. <laughs> it won't be the first time. <laughs> what kind of dog? Avoid it. Hmm? We make him a what panelist. Kind of dog? He's a terrier corgi Shiba mix. Oh, nice. Hold on. Hold, please. Oh. Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, what a cutie. Yeah. I mean, he can oh hang. My God. He, can he might be able to hang, but he's going to like, climb up on the table. It's <laughs> <laughs> the treat bag. I love it. Oh. All right, you come. Right. Okay, we are uh, we are going live on Facebook, well, and I will be. I'm now going to. I'm now going to open the door to uh, to the webinar, so we should have people start coming in. Cool. Now, the webinar is live. Are the Winklevoss twins still planning to be panelists? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how we'll start it this is a, this is this is the vibe then i see you welcome everybody uh we're going to start in about four minutes really great lisa oh, God. oh <laughs> yeah thank you super fun show to shoot vintage trouble amazing they're just a and they opened for trombone shorty and it was just one of the early Where is that? Is that the anthem oh wow yeah so the lighting i just could not get i really had never seen like full-on yellow like that it was <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. pretty, pretty wild yeah 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 i mean that's like i just hadn't seen it anywhere so yeah so that would have been one of those shots where i would have been like trying to look quickly on my camera to see if I got it and then just racing home like did I get it did I get it did I get it did I get it <laughs> yeah. I'm like I shouldn't look at my camera on a, at a red light while I'm driving home but also like I need to if I got it <laughs> <laughs> I believe we're recording this you may not want to say that <laughs> I, I like what Chris said earlier when we were um when Dr. we were talking about it everyone has their own style there. so yeah. you can definitely if I were to take each of your images without names on them, I could I could definitely pick out whose is whose. Cool. Um, so, thanks for joining us, everyone. We're going to start in about two minutes. Ooh. Aw, thanks, Chris Suspect. That was a nice note. Oh. How do you see that is stuff? Nice. Very nice. There's a little thing at the bottom of the screen that says chat. Yep. We're about to open the chat window. Let's see. I am on an iPad. <laughs> we're just we're just glad you're on, Chris. I mean, not Chris, so he it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. I have to pull it up. I just got a text that said they see me, so something's working. It's working. Yeah, we should be uh, <laughs> Uh, it's always funny. This is our fourth show, and every time I'm I'm on there saying, "Are we on Facebook? Are we on Facebook? Can anyone check?" So I haven't checked. I'm I'm sure we're fine. No, we're fine. I just looked on my phone. We are on Facebook. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, we are going to start up here in 30 seconds. Awesome. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the show tonight. Uh, we're gonna be sort of taking a break from the world of coronavirus and talking about some fun things and, 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 and going back to, uh, to the days when we could all go to clubs and festivals and, and all those things. And those days are gonna come again. And it's good to, uh, to kind of talk about uh, uh, music a little bit tonight and, and, and clear our minds of some of the other things. Uh, the, um, the program is part of our virtual photo festival. Uh, it's, uh, the focus on the story photo festival was supposed to be held at the end of May. Uh, we ended up canceling that and we are 
now switching entirely to a virtual program. Um, we are streaming shows each week. This is, I think, the fourth show we've done. Um, and tonight's gonna, be a, tonight's gonna be a good one. Um, first, let me get this out of the way. The um, questions tonight, please ask questions, um, but ask them by dropping them into the Q&A box at the bottom of the, of the screen. You'll see a, a place for that. Uh, leave them there. Uh, you can talk to us in chat as well. We'll be monitoring chat, uh, but uh, uh, we could miss them if they're, if they're in the chat box. Um, tonight's moderator <laughs> is Jason Hamaker. Um, I met Jason a few years ago when he was giving a talk about the photos he took in pre-war Aleppo. Uh, the backstory to his Syria photos is amazing. We're not going to go into that tonight, but when you get a chance, Google his name in the interview he did with Terry Gross on Fresh Air. Um, it's worth your time. But besides having his Syria photos held at the Library of Congress, Jason is also the, the owner of the Lost Origins Gallery here in DC. Um, he's really a Renaissance man. It, 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 did it, it didn't take me long to figure out that this guy not only marches to the beat of a different drummer, he is the drummer. <laughs> Uh, that, that was kind of okay. Um, but seriously, <laughs> he is a drummer. Um, he's a he's a professional um, musician. He's played on for several punk bands, including Frodus, and he's currently the drummer for Zealot R.I.P. Uh, this picture is obviously pre-coronavirus days, uh, or Jason is a <laughs> super spreader here. Um, so Jason is is a guy that gets things done. And I saw that, recognized that early. I asked him to be on the board of directors to focus on the story. And one of the best decisions I've, I've made. Um, I'm gonna hand the show over to you, Jason. It's, it's all yours, uh, take it away. Hey everybody. So I am on an iPad with my headphones at Lost Origins, so I'm pretty excited. Um, what I really wanted to do with these four photographers and everyone that's paying attention is to one, have a conversation with the photographers about shooting live, shooting not just rock or hardcore, but just music in general. What that means, how does it actually work? What, how does that affect the individuals involved? But then also for everyone that's watching, be able to field questions about how to do this if you want to break into doing uh, photographing photos of live music for yourself. Um, we're going to do this alphabetically. I'm going to kind of turn the camera over to the individual and we'll start with Christopher Grady. Chris shoots uh, a lot of local indie punk hardcore music here in DC. Um, typically does black and white. And Chris, go ahead and intro yourself. Sure, yeah, like Jason said, uh, mostly kind of in the kind of DMV area, you know, uh, Washington DC, Baltimore, and in and around there is where I, I focus. Um, I've always loved black and white photography. So, and uh, at the beginning of this whole thing, like I definitely tried, um, tried color, but black and white was a lot more forgiving. So, uh, and I've never really kind of let go of that because I just love the, uh, the contrast. And um, yeah, so that's, but uh, yeah, that's, I guess, a intro. Now, question, what do you mean by you felt like black and white was more forgiving? Oh, well, it, so what I noticed right away, so when I started about eight years ago, um, and I got the camera because we had um, our second child, my wife and I, and uh, we wanted to kind of document the, the child, my, my son Sam, with a uh, kind of better, better camera. And so I was used to kind of taking pictures of a baby and my older uh, daughter, Eva, as well. And, um, and then I was like, wait a second, I can take this to, to clubs now, like I tried to do about 20 years previously and just wasn't very good at it then. And um, I had a good friend that helped me along with it, um, you know, to start up with it. 
And, um, you know, one of the things I realized straight off is that light is a problem, especially in smaller clubs <laughs> and trying to find light and shooting in black and white is more forgiving because when you're, when you're up at a high ISO, you tend to be more noisy and that um, you can kind of, I don't want to say fudge it with black and white a little bit, but you can definitely kind of uh, keep it a little bit less noisy uh, in the post-production um, while working in the, the black and white uh, kind of sphere. I'm sure everyone on this call probably knows exactly what I'm talking about if you've shot, especially when maybe light isn't, uh, you know, like for this one, this one, we had a lot of light for that show because it was at the 930 Club, but, um, but yeah. So one of the things I want to get into with everyone on the panel is you kept referring to the camera and it. I actually want to know models, lenses, all that kind of fun stuff. Cool. But we'll get to we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. So, according to the alphabet, Abdullah is it Conte? Uh, Conte. Conte. Well, I got close. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, close. Yeah, it's close enough. I'll take it. Yeah. Intro. Introduce yourself to everyone. Yeah. Uh, so my name's Abdullah Conte. I've been shooting. Uh, well, I've owned a camera for like two years, but I've kind of been doing more like landscape for like the first year. And then last year is kind of when I got into sports and concert photography. Um, and I'm kind of like the opposite of Chris where I do love black and white and I try to throw it in there every once in a while. Uh, but I'm very known for being, you know, kind of heavy on the saturation side of things. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's kind of like my style, but you know, I just love shooting shows because it just is, uh, I love going to places that have a lot of energy. So, uh, you know, I grew up playing sports. My, my family's a sports family, but we're also big into music. Um, and yeah, so I'm the house photographer at Fillmore and Silver Spring. Um, and it's just been fun. I've been able to get to see a lot of different bands and, and artists and musicians. And, um, it's just, just been a lot of fun being in this field. What did you used to play in sport? So I used to play football. Uh, I was a corner. Um, I played at the University of New Mexico, which is like also my hometown. So it's kind of random. Go Lobos, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. Throw that plug in, you know. Yeah. That well, no, that's all. so. One of the things that I would really want to explore with you is obviously the the mental state of sports and practice and the dedication and discipline it takes to do sports. Yeah. I want to explore a little bit about how that how that crosses over into working with the camera for you. Oh, I mean cool. it's huge. Um yeah, no, I mean honestly, I especially when you talk about the pit, the pit is somewhere where it's exciting, but it it can be a little competitive and you have to kind of be strategic on the way you shoot, the angles you want to get at, the staying out of people's way, being respectful of the people around you, but also being somewhat aggressive to get the shots that you want. So um, I don't know. It's just kind of, you know, when it comes to anything you're doing, I think playing a sport uh, helps you become somebody who's very driven and knows that it takes a lot to accomplish their goal. Um, so I'm very thankful for my time. I mean, football is really tough and there's parts of it that I miss and parts that I don't, but I definitely am grateful for like, lessons learned uh, playing. Yeah, definitely. So, Farah Skaiki, you are next. Oh, you tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, do your thing. <laughs> hey, hey, do your thing. <laughs> so, so I have known Farah for a while in and around being in music. Um, one of the big reasons I really wanted to have her on this panel is because not only does she take amazing black and white photos, but she just published a book. And that is yeah. the print component to all of this is something that I find super important. Um, Chris also has published a really incredible zine. Um, was it late last year, Chris? Uh, yeah, about halfway through last year. Yeah. And so part of the discussion that I find is a lot of times concert photography ends up being on a screen, but 
to take it from screen to page is a one it's a hugely incredible experience but then besides that it's just a different thought process as well so far up go for it <laughs> um yeah at the end of february i put out a self-published book called present tense that is a really this body of work of the past five or six years of DC punk and DIY. Um, it's in black and white. I'm mostly shooting in black and white as well. So to Chris, for me, it started as kind of like a crutch when I was shooting in spaces where I couldn't use flash. Um, and there was like that really aggressive red club lighting. Like so many venues I love do that. I just hate it so much. Um, and you can't always rely on the flash in um, spaces like that. So black and white became um, a way to fix what I didn't understand about the lighting and then slowly became something that like I shot with the intention of getting um, you know high action and high contrast. Um, I grew up like I got into punk because of Maximum Rock and Roll and got a subscription shortly after that. I had a subscription to Enemy. I had a subscription to Spin um, and print was always something that was really excited, exciting to me. Um, and punk in general, um, similar to like GoGo in DC is a collector culture like tapes and shirts and records like we're about having the stuff we're about uh, bragging about having the stuff that other people don't have so for me it's always made sense to connect what I do to print because that's how we share things in punk um, also like I learned to be a photographer in a very digital age where things were just on a screen and I never really forgot about those magazines I used to hold in my hand, even something in newsprint like MRR. And I always, the goal was always to like get in print, whether somebody else was printing my photos or I was doing it myself. So this, I printed, you know, smaller prints before, um, done benefit sales. This photo of Turnstile, which is from 2017 uh, or 18, I forget, is, um, was a, I did a 50 run of this print to benefit um, the UN Refugee Works uh, committee and raised over a thousand dollars for Palestinian refugee assistance. Um, a lot of the prints I've done are for other causes. So this book was kind of the first thing I did for myself and it's been really exciting. So that's, that's what amazing. I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, Lisa Walker, yes. get in there. <laughs> um, so I'm Lisa Walker. Um, I've been shooting I guess a little more seriously since about 2012. Uh, I'm, I shoot in color. Occasionally I shoot in black and white. I kind of just feel it out. It just depends on the situation. Sometimes when I'm shooting punk and darker, smaller venues, I love the black and white. Uh, I like the texture and the feel. But other times when I have opportunities to have some really exceptional light, maybe at like the Anthem, sometimes at 930 Club, some of these venues. Uh, this is Meriwether Post Pavilion actually. Um, I love to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some ways, I love that challenge of really not having any control over anything that's going on up there, you know, in front of me. Um, right. And uh, this is actually a Swedish metal band. Uh, they were opening for, uh, at the, they were part of the Slayer Farewell Tour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which was Swedish metal is my language. <laughs> it was. There, you can't see it here, but there was a Viking ship on stage, which was pretty impressive. So the yeah, who, who is this? This was um, a Marmoth? That's it. That's it. I always pronounce it wrong. Amonamarth is the name. Oh, of the I pronounce everything wrong. Oh, oh we know. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Flora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I was going to say total sidebar though. I actually, um, I grew up playing music at a young age and I, um, I honestly would always go to tons of live shows, uh, even, you know, as a young teenager. And so I honestly started shooting because I wanted to figure out how could I go to shows and festivals for free? <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, that's right. sort of the motivation, honestly. And because some friends of mine said, hey, you know, this, these pictures look good, or this is good. Why don't you try it? Or why don't you try to get press for this? Or why don't you write about it? Why don't you write about it and shoot it? And um, it just, I was I said, always going for the music anyway. I love the energy. And that's one of the things I really love about shooting live music is I tend to really like to shoot the shows that have a lot of energy, whether it's the band or the audience and the fans. Um, I love being in that and I love being 
in that pit in that. I mean, and shooting things like Slayer and, and these other bands, the energy's coming from the stage and the audience all at the same time. And the same thing yeah. with punk shows, you know, you're just surrounded by it. Um, oh, and I was gonna say, I basically, I, I wish, um, I, I actually, I work in print publishing and I haven't done a print version of anything on my own, but ironically, uh, but um, uh, where was it? Oh, I would love to do, I shoot for IMP as, you know, one of their house photographers in the DC area. Um, there's quite a few, uh, you know, concert, a uh, large group of people that shoot for all the venues. Um, yeah. I shoot for Bonnaroo as a staff photographer and I shoot for South by Southwest and, and then a few other things occasionally, um, press things uh, for various different outlets, but uh, I wish I'd like to shoot more bands and um, love to do more of that. And obviously I shoot a lot of festivals and things like that. So that's me. Cool. So <laughs> one, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, you know, everyone basically described a little bit about what they shoot, how they shoot, but everyone on here is a professional. Um, what the transition from just showing up to photograph and starting to actually get payment of any kind because <laughs> for a lot you know for a lot of people it's more like hey can you photograph my band yeah that'd be fun but there's a bridge from when you start to take photographs and then when bands actually need to use them getting the licensing or all of that like I just wanted to go over some some personal stories from each one of you about one of your first paid photo jobs for shooting live. And and a lot of times, I know this as well, the pay doesn't come to show up, but it comes later when someone needs to use an image. So we'll do the same order. Um, Chris, tell me about some of one of your first paid experiences. So paid experiences. So there's not a lot, just to be kind of completely clear. And, you know, I guess the the kind of the preface to that is like, not what I'm doing it for. Um, this is actually bre like breathed a lot more life into me in terms of going to shows. Um, and so but I can still answer that because it like recently I did actually have um, some good experience in that. Um, I, uh, I had shot uh, Thurston Moore um, a few years ago, um, this image right here actually, and there's, there's two of them in, uh, of him. And, um, and one of the images, or I put both of these actually on Instagram, um, and I started to notice, and my good buddy Greg, hey Greg, he's on here, uh, also uh, started noticing that Thurston was kind of um, was using it, which was awesome. Like I thought that was great. Like he liked the picture. I loved Sonic Youth since I'd first heard Titanium Expose and Pump Up the Volume in like 1990. And um, so it was like really. Do you have a cool. photo of? Wait, do you have a photo of what you would have been wearing while listening to that album? Uh, no photos exist <laughs> at that. Uh, I, I, I probably would have had a, 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 some sort of either like a Steve Caballero t-shirt on or some sort of skate shirt at that point. Cause I was deep into it at that point. But did, but, did you wear Jenko jeans or skids overalls? Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> Moving on. So this particular, it wasn't this photo that we, that I kept seeing, but there was the, another one uh, in here. And I guess if uh, to help that, that's it. So I, he was using this one a lot, which was awesome and thought it was great. And I love this photo. I, I just, I hate to say that I love a photo of, that I've taken, but I just kind of really dug how it looked. And this was at the Rock and Roll Hotel um, while it was still open. And, um, and so we were watching this happen. And uh, then at some point, um, my buddy reached out and said, hey, if you want to credit the photographer, it's, uh, this is the guy. And from what I can tell, I think they all kind of went, oh, crap, because they didn't know. They thought it was somebody else. And they actually had used that first photo in Thurston's latest um, uh, CD that, just, that had come out called uh, Spirit Council. Great actual um, 
kind of box of three discs. And, uh, and I very, I, my wife and I and the kids were, I didn't actually just a wife and I were in, um, we're at the Hirshhorn just walking around when I start getting these notifications like, you know, ecstatic peace library wants to talk to you or something. I'm like, well, what's going on? And come to find out that they, they were very kind of cool. And they said, look, we're really sorry. We didn't know that you had taken this, but they made it right. And I got paid kind of well over 500 bucks for it. And it felt good. Like I was like, wow, out of nowhere. Yeah. Got paid, you know, for this. And again, I, I think that's not how they do things. I would like to say that number one, they were amazing. Um, they put me on two shows afterwards saying like, look, whatever we need to do to make this right, even making it right just would have been, hey, it's cool. Just thanks for letting me know that you you know, put it in the in the box set. Um, I was right. just kind of excited about it. But it did, you know, it helped because, you know, around that time, my um, I was shooting on a Nikon D750 and I was in. I was at the at a makeup show in at the Black Cat and my camera broke, just stopped. Like the shutter finally reached its end of life. And so I had recently then moved up to a D850 and the money was a, a nice kind of um, cushion for that. Killer. So did that answer it? I'm sorry, I think I may have rammed. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, it's great. <laughs> Abdullah, what about you? What was your, your kind of transitional one of your transitional shoots from um, just doing it yeah. for fun to doing it and maybe getting paid for it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I like, it's been like a year, so it hasn't been like the longest period, but there was a time where I really wanted to get into just every type of photography. Like, you know, a lot of the advice that I got from mentors and stuff was like, hey, try out everything. You know, if you want to yeah. learn more about photography and you want to get into a specific type or find your niche, try everything. So I would go shooting dogs, I'd go shooting sports, I'd go shooting anything I could. And I remember my friend uh, was going to an event, it was kind of like a DJ event at Fillmore. And um, he was like, yeah, you should come. And I was like, eh, I don't really want to. I'm kind of tired. It was a Friday night and I was an accountant before. So I was just like, <laughs> I just want to go to bed. I, you know, eight, nine to five. I just want to go home. But I was like, oh, maybe I can go shoot it. Maybe I'll get that opportunity. And when I did, I emailed them and they said, yeah. And I came through and, you know, I shot it for them and it was fun. And when I was there, I just kind of, you know, I guess felt that same energy that me and Lisa were talking about, just being in that environment. And, you know, I kind of wanted more. And I was asking everybody who was working there, like, who can I talk to to give me like an opportunity to come back? Um, so I talked to, you know, a couple people there. And so I just kept showing up, you know, I kept emailing them like, hey, any show you got, if you want somebody to come around and shoot, I'll come. And it was kind of like a month or two of me just going to like every show I could. And there was times where I went to like five shows in a seven week period and, you know, or a seven day period. And, and they were really happy with what I was producing for them. So uh, I get this one day I got an email that saying that they wanted me to, you know, come aboard. <laughs> And honestly, I've just been very fortunate that I was like right place, right time. But it was just kind of like, you know, it was really nice to feel that the hard work. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you because I wholeheartedly disagree with the phrase, right phrase, right time. Um, okay, sure. You weren't at the right place at the right time. You were super persistent in wanting sure. to be a photographer. Yeah. And the pers but, but I say that because, you know, a lot of people that are paying attention, a lot of times it feels like, oh, that person got a break because they happen to be at the right place at the right time. But you were persistent in contacting yeah. these people. And yeah. that's important. Like the persistence, the, like you can be an amazing photographer, but if you're not actively trying to go out and do these things, then no one's going to know. Yeah, and no, so, I, <laughs> I mean, big, big, big kudos to you. I mean, that's, it's incredible, you know? Thank you. No, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's, it's tough because, you know, I don't want to just only credit it to just the hard work because I agree. Like, you can't get anywhere without hard work. You have to put the time in and effort. And so when people ask me, like, what can I do to get into this field? I'm just like, you really have to work hard and realize this is something you really want to do. But mm -hmm. it's also like, the reason why I say right place, right time is because you also, we also are in this industry and we know of plenty of people who've worked really, really hard and maybe haven't got that break yet. And it's something where you want to make sure that they know to keep going because it may be coming soon. 
And um, for me, I was just grateful that I got that opportunity. And so, um, right. you know, I do, it's, it takes a little bit of luck sometimes too, as, as well as hard work. Yeah, I agree. It, it takes a, it, it definitely takes a little bit of luck, but the, there's something that's interesting when it comes to the creative arts, where if you're doing it out of passion, but then there, there comes a time whether you're in a band, or you're a photographer, or you're a painter, where you start getting paid enough, you have yeah. to make the decision, do I try to turn this into my profession, sure. or do I kind of coast and be kind of like a professional when I say hobbyist, that's got nothing to do with the skill, but like as far as yeah. time involved with the craft, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. And, 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 and honestly, I I quit my job seven months ago because of that, because of what you're saying. Like I was an accountant, yeah. and granted, now it's kind of like, man, I wish I had that accounting income. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, at the same time, I'm grateful for jumping at the goal that you're talking about. So yeah, it does have to do with somebody willing to put their all into something. I would always bet on passion over anything. Right, right. No, it's great. Um, Farah. Hello. <laughs> um, um, so first of all, uh, like Lisa, like some other folks uh, in the DC photo community, I also shoot for IMP and their venues. And I've been doing that on and off since I was about, since I was like 20. I think the first show I shot for IMP was like right before I turned 21. Um, and I also, all my music photos started with friends' bands in basements, like in community centers, at Battle of the Bands, at birthday parties, whatever. Um, I got into photo and I wanted to just take my camera everywhere and I was shooting with a rebel. And I got a couple opportunities with some DC online magazines, including um, Brightest Young Things, to just show up and shoot. Um, I knew that I was cultivating the skill, but I didn't feel like I had the access. Like, I was barely 21. I wasn't planning on being a professional photographer, a full-time music photographer. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about the exposure portion in so at some point, or, and I'm sure people will talk about you know, the compensation portion of this at some point in this panel or in another one. Um, but for me, it's very much like, if you do believe that an opportunity can afford you exposure that is worth it to you, you have to kind of set the terms. So for me, it was easy to like talk to a site like Brightest Young Things and say like, I want to shoot for you. Um, I know you're not like paying, but I need to like have ownership of my photos and like I need photo credit and I do need the, you know, I, I, I knew I was getting something out of getting a press pass through them. Um, and not having to set it up for myself. Like I was 20, I didn't know how to set that up for myself. I didn't know who to email. <laughs> Hi, 930 Club, I have a kid in Rebel, please take me seriously. Um, so <laughs> I shot for BYT. So a week before I turned 21 and it was Lemuria screaming females and against me. Um, and that really, you know, I've, I've always been into punk since I was like 12 or 13, um, but that, show and I think back on it and like I now have a relationship with screaming females like I've shot their um promo photo for like their second to last record that they use for a lot of their touring and things like that um there's a promo photo in here the one color one of the DC band Red Death this was a band that I just shot because like I like them and they're my friends and their energy is great um but um you know when they signed to Century Media and had a budget they were like we want to hire you to shoot um i think a big part like the best advice somebody's given me especially as like a woman and a young woman working in this is like when somebody asks you what your rate is to say the highest number that makes sense to you without laughing out loud and i've stuck with that from the beginning <laughs> it's the best advice i've ever gotten um and there's a little bit of like a trade-off i feel like i've grown with a lot of the bands that i shoot really regularly like that band screaming females like i'm almost 30 i've been shooting that band for 10 years so i know them inside and out right this photo of Ceremony is at U Street Music Hall, a place I love very much. I shot it for IMP. Um, I shot it for the venue, but like I have a relationship with the people in that band as well because I've been shooting them since 2012, 2013. So they know that if they have an opportunity to put somebody on a show or a tour, I'm a person that they know, they trust, and have built a rapport with. So I think part of that, I, I'm not completely sure when I decided that I'm a professional photographer. And I don't intend to make music photography my primary career of source of income. Um, I'm a creative director. I shoot a lot of other things that aren't live music at my day job, which is also sometimes an evening job. Um, 
and I love being able to shoot a lot of different stuff. I shoot a lot of food. Um, I used to play sports, uh, play hockey. I'll shoot hockey when I have the chance to do so. Um, but for me, like, I just really love punk. I feel good being at those shows and it means something to me. And I'm really proud of what, you know, the shows I get to go to and the people who are there. And I really just want people to know that it's the thing that's happening. Um, people talk about DC to punk in the past tense. So I want to make sure people know that it's still happening. And like all these photos were taken in DC, uh, DC venues, and they're like DC bands or DC area bands or DC based music festivals. So um, that's my main motivation. And if somebody in a band wants to be able to, you know, buy a photo later or use it for something and figure out some kind of agreement, that's great. But for me, that's just kind of a bonus of getting to do all sure. of it. Sure, that's great. Um, Lisa. Yes. <laughs> How did you start shooting for South by Bonnaroo, IMP, all of those? You know, um, I feel like, you know, like, like when you're saying, when you put yourself out there, you know, and you start to, I actually, well, actually it all started because um, I work at National Geographic, but I work in book publishing and um, there was- You do? Yeah. Do you work yeah. with Do you work with Sana? I do. <laughs> I know awesome. Sana. Yeah, she's you, a friend of mine. Do you know Melissa Harris? I do. That's I, do. I work sick. with Melissa. Yeah, yeah. Melissa, by the way, for all of you, was also she's a creative director now at National Geographic and Books, but she also was in a band uh, years ago. Uh, she plays music as well, and uh, and Sana is just a really super talented uh, designer who's from Morocco, actually. What? Which Melissa is not just in any band. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> she was in the band Tuscadero. That yes, was amazing from DC. So cool. That I don't know if you know, Lisa. Frodis <laughs> was on a record with Tuscadero. We no did, way. Yeah, we we did one song each. See, it was awesome. DC is such a small world, really, isn't it? In the whole creative community, I mean, it's unreal. But uh, yeah, actually, totally. Um, it's so small and, you know, opportunities. I just, this, by the way, the, the reason I got to shoot this photograph that's in front of you right now, which is actually at a Moroccan music festival, was all because at one time, Nat National Geographic had a division of Nat Geo Music. And it was so cool. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it was underused and um, unfortunately it got cut out of a budget of course, at some point in time, a few years back, but uh, I had gotten to know some of the staff and I was just helping them out. I had made a decision. I, you know, was really enjoying shooting festivals, music or whatnot. And so they would actually set me up for press to shoot at the venues in DC. And I'd shoot a lot of uh, world music, which I love as well. So this was an opportunity when the editor said, hey, you know what, um, we're gonna go to this festival and uh, we need a photographer. And in this case, I wasn't necessarily gonna be getting paid um, for actual individual photographs. However, uh, they were supplementing some of my costs, um, some of my, my airfare and where I was gonna be staying. Uh, so in my, and you know, you, like Faro was saying, you make these decisions sometimes uh, of what's sort of a value here. I was excited to be supporting them. I knew it was gonna give me some great opportunity, uh, some amazing op photo opportunities and, uh, and, and supporting this. And it was just, so it, it, was, it wasn't paid as in an uh, individual shoot necessarily, but it was such sure. a good opportunity. By the way, Farah is in this yeah, picture. I'm in this photo and now I'm like, <laughs> what, is my, what is my reverse version of this photo of Hank Wood from Damage City last year, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no fun. <laughs> I need see, we need to make like a side by side zine of like yeah. photos we got from opposite yeah. sides of the stage. Oh my God. It was so much fun. There's far as on the other side. So here's that idea. You know, we made, she made the decision. She's on one side of the stage, I'm on the other. You're right. We have a different perspective, which is great. Uh, different angles. And um, this is a rare opportunity where I got to use some flash. So it was pretty awesome because that's. You, you guys all know Black Cat is very, very dark venue. And uh, yeah. in order to really get all that energy and 
I mean, these guys were all over the place and the audience was really into it. It was so much fun. Uh, great time. So I'm getting sidetracked because I'm looking at these pictures, but, um, and this is Jay from Rival Sun. Uh, who I just absolutely love this band. I love his voice. And uh, I thought that was Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, <laughs> no, it's Jay Buchanan from uh, Rival Sons, which are, they're out of, Na like out of Nashville now. But uh, yeah. there are sort of like a little bit of a revival of like a classic rock band in a way with a, a modern spin. Yeah. And yeah, his voice, phenomenal. <laughs> um, in this case, actually, I was shooting for the band. So shooting for the band in that cool. I, I got press. I didn't necessarily, I didn't get paid, unfortunately, but I was so excited uh, because I really enjoy this band. And this was actually up in Asbury Park. Um, nice. Yeah, so, and this is at the Anthem in DC, which is part of IMP. Um, and, you know, some of these, honestly, for me, um, you know, we shoot for IMP, I get to go to the show for free, I get to bring a plus one. Um, oh, this is at King Gizzard, by the way. This is just a really awesome fan. I just love this picture. I just love this energy. Um, it's like you couldn't even get someone to just sort of, like he, he just was doing this. He was, he was having such a good time. Yeah. Awesome. But, um, so, but yeah, so I don't, I guess getting back to this whole paid or not paid, I mean, you know, this for me, I love this and I love that I get to go to these shows. I bring someone on occasion. I do. I was going to say early in the beginning that my first actual paid gig was I was down in Austin for South by and I was hooked up through a friend with a guy who uh, worked for country weekly magazine in Nashville. And I met up with him. He was a writer and editor and uh, we ended up, he had ideas of things he wanted to get photographs of. So I connected, we went to the venues and, or the, the artists and the places he want. I took photographs, uh, took me to uh, Willie Nelson's, um, there's this heartbreaker banquet, they call it at South by, which is on his ranch. And- uh, Whoa, yeah. that's awesome. Oh my God. It's so cool. You, you get on a school bus out of Austin, right? And everyone's <laughs> like acting like they're 15 years old, you know? going to Willie's Ranch. And then the next thing you know, like an hour or half, I think it's like an hour later, you show up at this really cool ranch. And it's a, it was a movie set actually for Willie. And they, they broke it out into these different buildings where they had, you know, there was like moonshine, there was food to eat, and there was a couple of <laughs> stages. And then Willie Nelson performed with Nickus and Lucas. And it was just such a good time. I mean, so, and That's I got to shoot it. Awesome. Yeah, so that was actually a paid gig. So every once in a while. So one of the questions I had for you and also for Abdullah was when you shoot for these venues, actually it applies to Tar as well. When you shoot for these venues, how does the copyright work? Do they, do you retain copyright and you're kind of like licensing it back? Yeah, so that's, how, that's how my setup is. Yeah, that is, that is true for me as well. Yeah. I still retain copyright of my images. And yeah. same thing with, yeah, same thing with Bonnaroo and South by, although for South by Southwest, you have to allow them usage, but you cannot post images from South by within, I want to say there's like a 60 days or there's a period of in the very beginning uh, where they kind of want to post. I mean, you could do it on social media or things like that, but they want to, sure. yeah. Like an exclusivity thing. And yeah, like even for IMP, they, they do technically like, you, it's like we co-owned the photos basically, mm -hmm. right? There was a show that I shot, I think it's actually the, the one ceremony photo where the guy's legs are up in the air in the pit. Um, and they were like, oh, hey, like a writer from Washington Post might, somebody from Washington Post might be coming to like write about the band and they might need to use the photo, but they like let me know ahead of time. So it's like we both own them, but they're not gonna like give my photos to somebody without giving me a heads up, um, unless sure. it's like on a Facebook ad that they use like for the venue or something like that. Uh, but that's kind of right. part of the trade-off. Yes. Right. Awesome. Um, one of the things that we were kind of joking about with you, Chris, was wearing Jankos or whatever. But um, one of the Thanks. things that I think is actually, <laughs> well, it made me think. So <laughs> capturing these artists on stage 
in a very specific time, place, location, you know, fashion changes everything. One of the things that I think is really interesting is being able to glance at an image and then it's, it's iconic, you know, like I had no intention of doing this, but I, I've started to frame the exhibit. Can you see, can you see that photo right there? Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. Bauhaus in 1978. Yeah. And then these, that is Sid Vicious and Debbie Harry yeah. from 1981 and 1982. Debbie Harry photo. It's insane. Nice. <laughs> they're, they're from this photographer in San Francisco. This will be the exhibit whenever we're allowed to go back out in public. But taking these images, like th these photos have never been shown in a collection before. It's been 40 years. Crazy. So one of the things that I find interesting, and I just kind of wanted to talk about all of you as photographers, your interactions with the artists, not, not, uh, not us, the artists, but like with the musicians. Um, have you had interaction with the individual, um, not with someone that you know, with someone that you took a photo of and ended up met because of the photo or something like that? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chris, you had mentioned Thurston Moore, but what about someone else? Have you photographed? Oh, hey. Hi, how are you guys? Hello. Hey guys, this, Hello. speaking of musicians, this is Allison. She sings for the band The Kills. No way. She's an old, she's an old friend of mine. Uh, and where are you, Allison? Okay. So one of the things that, one of the things that we were just talking about was how photographers and then the musicians it's kind of a symbiotic relationship and have any of the photographers met a musician that they ended up kind of befriending or having an interaction with because of a photograph so i'm going to ask you that question like obviously you play shows everywhere um have there been photographs or photographers that have taken photos of you that you've ended up wanting to use for something that you just don't you didn't know who the person was you just like their art um yes definitely and i mean definitely like when i first started being in bands you know there'd be the band and then you'd have this like crew of people around and there'd always be one or five people with you know that <laughs> wanted to be photographers you know but then some of those people did end up becoming photographers and going on the road and I still know them and I love their photos, you know. But yeah, there's the, the occasional- Is that, is that person Sean Scallon? He's one of them actually, he's been <laughs> yeah. me in a long time. But you know Mark Merman? Yeah. yeah. Do you know Mark Merman? Yeah. yeah. Just some of that, you know, if I'm ever in San Francisco, there's no way I'm not inviting him because guess what? He's gonna have amazing pictures. This could be- <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, there's- yeah, all the time. You know, there's someone in every town that's just kind of killing it. And you hope that- And Alice, and so everyone else knows, Allison's also a photographer. You just had a book come out not that long ago of what? Cars. That's <laughs> awesome. Yes. <laughs> cars. Uh, no, it was like cars paintings and, you know, there are bands in that too. There's lots of things in there. Um, so you're in Nashville, right? Yeah. Now? Uh-huh. Awesome. Forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so other, other panelists, do you guys have any, any stories about taking photographs of a band or of an artist that you ended up meeting because they liked your photography? I can actually wrap this up with Tuscadero. <laughs> um, so I t they did a reunion uh, about seven or so years ago at the Black Cat for one of the Black Cat's like anniversary shows. And um, one of the photos I took, it's not on here, sorry, um, was of uh, the bassist, Phil, um, jumping off the bass cabinet while he's playing his bass. He was just having fun. And if anybody was at the show, you can see they all were just having a blast. And uh, I, I enjoy, really like that photo. And then a couple of years later, I ended up, we, my wife and I and our family moved 
and we come to find out that um, that Phil lives right down the street. And so <laughs> I was like, hey, I took a photo with you, uh, of you, you know, at this show. And he's like, the one where I'm jumping. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. And so like, now I know <laughs> Phil. And, um, and so it's, but again, and I think what it was said last time, it is, you know, it's a small community. Um, and it's, it's kind of, that, that was kind of a fun kind of thing. And, you know, to this day, like his kids go to the same elementary school as mine and our friends. So that was like a, a weird thing I never would have thought would have happened because the first time I saw Tuscadero was in 94 or 95 at Swarthmore College. And so <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, fast forward 20 some odd years later. And, uh, you know, that was actually the, the seed that kind of created a friendship out of that. It was cool. Right. Nice. Yeah, I've had um, a few of those. Oh, sorry, please go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay, yeah, I've had a few of those as well. Um, that's what happened with Screaming Females when I first shot them 10 years ago. Um, now, if they're playing in DC or Baltimore, I'm not missing their show. Um, it's happened with a few other bands as well, including, um, you know, Elisa and I were both shooting Damage City a couple years ago and Limp Wrist was playing. And it was my first time <laughs> seeing Limp Wrist, and I'm sure I'm in the back of some of her photos crying just like tears of joy and being like, I'm taking photos, I promise. Um, but now that's, you know, they hit me up later and they've just put out a 20 year anniversary Limp Wrist zine um, that Martine edited and some of those photos are in there as well. Um, Allison's totally right. Like there's somebody in every city who's just like killing the game. Uh, I'm part of this network of photographers uh, called To The Front DIY that is all women and non-binary music photographers. Some of those folks are in the chat and I see them and I'm glad that they're here. But really like when I first joined that group, I was like, I know that person and that person and that person I could tell you like what venue they shoot at, where they hang out and what bands are kind of like their right. bands, like what bands they like know so well because they'd never miss a show. Um, but it's awesome to be able to kind of form that relationship with the band and know that like every time you're shooting them, it's practice and you're like getting to know them more and more and you can kind of start to like anticipate the movements and know what's coming next. And like you get to be surprised too. Um, and it just makes for like, better photos every single time yeah i mean it really helps if you yourself the photographer loves the band if you love the band and you love the music you have like a special vision like you can see you can see the really cool moments and i noticed that so it is the people that continuously show up that i, I find it hard though because i'm screaming along with the <laughs> band <laughs> like, like i gotta shoot Flurry. <laughs> 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 But I feel your love I mean, in that blur, you know? That's, that's cool. <laughs> have any of you got to tour with a band as photographer? Allison, do you have a photographer that you tour that comes with you? No, that would be Jamie Hintz, my bandmate, who uh, takes pictures of the <laughs> nice. yeah. uh, you know, No, not really. I mean, but again, it's like we have so many friends at this point and spent 20 years of touring yeah. with them um, that, you know, that friend that God, is. Has it been 20 years? 20 years this year, Jason. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm no. 100 years old. I don't know. You're younger than me. <laughs> You're 200 years old. <laughs> 70 at least. So. <laughs> no, but you know, um, we've never been able to afford to do that. That is, a, that would be a luxury. That would be lovely. We have had people come with us, you know, if there's a project going on or we're shooting mm -hmm. like a film or doing something like that then that tour might be special and we'll have a person like that with us doing that job. But right. in general, I wish, you know. So Jason, I'm gonna um, break in with some Q&A in about two minutes, okay? Sure. If you, if you haven't got your questions in uh, yet, put them down at the bottom in the uh, Q&A box. Thanks a lot. Yeah, there's some great questions. Um, since we've got a couple of, before we go to questions, camera model, far ago. Uh, 5D Mark III speed light flash on the cable. Nice. Lisa, go. Icon D700, actually D750, actually. Uh, All right. And, and I just shoot 2.8 lenses, mostly night. All right. Yep. Me too, except I'm Canon. <laughs> Abdullah, go. Uh, Sony A72, um, 24 to 70, 2.8 or 35 millimeter, 1.4 sigma lens. I feel like this is a 24 to 70 support group. Chris, go. <laughs> uh, Nikon D850. Um, my uh, DeSantis, I think one of the questions though, but uh, language or 
lens of choice is my um, my 1.4 uh, 85 millimeter fixed because I can get in kind of pretty tight. Um, yeah. Other than that, 24 to 70 and uh, either my 35 <laughs> or 50 1.8. Allison, what do you take with you on tour? Not at home. Contacts T3 or a $5 point and shoot. I have a million of them everywhere in my house. But my favorite one, what we call it the spy camera. Hang on. It is so gigantic, but it's a point and shoot, but it's really gigantic. And when you take a picture, it's the loudest thing in the world. This is why we call it the spy camera because everyone knew what you just did. That was my bucks. My mom sent it to me. Amazing photos. It's so good. Incredible. So a lot of the questions were about access and how to get access to clubs. Is Cherie May, are you there? I'm going to um, allow you to talk. You can, you can unmute yourself at the bottom of the screen and ask your question. Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Hi. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Nice. Uh, thank you guys for your time, first of all. And um, I heard many of you, the common thing was that you you were going through the venues to shoot a lot of these shows versus, I think I heard one person say they had the venue and the art, had a relationship with venue and artists, but most of it has been venue. So if someone is trying to shoot a show, then where, where would they start in terms of who should they reach out to at the venue? Mm -hmm. There's usually some kind of contact page somewhere in there. Um, and if you're not reaching the right person, um, they'll let you know. But like, there's a media team at IMP. So when I first emailed about that, I had a friend who was like interning there and they're like, I'll get your email to the right person. And then they were like, all right, here's the deal if you want to be kind of part of our house photo team. But it's like being part of the team and contributing regularly. So they made it very clear like what their expectations were, what the guidelines are, what the rules are for you while you're shooting, and like what kind of photos they expect or what you know what shots you have to get. Um, and they let you know the terms. Um, and you basically do have to be contributing regularly. So you can't just be like this band I like is coming to town one time. And I'm gonna try to get a pass through the venue once. Like if you're if you're ready to email a venue. It means you're ready to kind of have a relationship with them and be right consistently working with them. So just keep that in mind. But usually there's some kind of contact FAQ page in there. Yep. Thank you. You know, I'll, I'll throw in there real quick. Um, what I, I've just uh, contacted the bands through Instagram and said, okay. hey, come in in town. I would love to shoot your pictures and make it available to you. You know, can you put me on the list? And, yeah. You know, it, yeah. you've, had, you've had some success you've had success with that yeah yeah for sure especially I, I would i would say another thing that i kind of tell people too like for instance a lot of people want to obviously shoot bands or artists that are very popular and it's really hard to get in or get in contact with them sometimes i say how about you contact the openers they don't usually have somebody that will take pictures for them and they would yeah. love to have someone take photos of them so that's also yeah. another strategic way to try to get in yeah and also, can I just say real quick, I get I get a lot of like emails through the band site and through Instagram and people will ask to come and take photos and they'll send me examples of their photos. Mm -hmm. you know? And if I love them, then I'll get them a photo pass. So I think that that happens, you know, I think every band wants great photos of themselves. We're all just obsessed with yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> Less maybe Lindsay Lohan. I'm joking, but you know. Uh, Brian Howell, are you out there? I'm going to um, uh, allow you to talk. Just unmute your mic at the bottom of the screen. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thanks. Hey, Brian. Oh. Uh, shout out to Frodis. I did not expect to encounter <laughs> <John> Frodis tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I used to rock. I used to rock out the conglomerate international back in the day. Still do occasionally. That's, Thank you. That is awesome. How much you pay? Uh, him? Yeah, I took so, my glasses to you. <laughs> my um, my question for you guys was about shooting musicians when they're not performing. Um, you know, if you if you have an interest in doing that, how might you go about getting that interest from the band or access to them and setting that up? Do you mean like band portraits? Yes, like band portraits. I mean, I think it's the same. It's the same way. Like 
most band man, you know, bands have either direct access through Instagram, Facebook, however you like the band or their manager or whatever contact. And it's essentially like Alton was saying earlier, like every band needs photos all the time. And so if you are good and you want to take a picture of a band, just like she said, like submit to the band and see what they have to say, yeah. you know? And to Abdullah's point earlier, if you don't hear anything, do it again and do it again. That doesn't mean they're saying no. That just means they're not paying attention or you need to get their attention in some fashion. Mm -hmm. I've been ignored, I've been ignored a lot, a lot. So <laughs> it's kind of yeah. I mean, uh, you know, on tour, like in any given day or any venue, there'll be lots of requests to do that. And a lot of people want to just come and take your picture, but there's not really a reason. Like there's not an article that it needs to go to or a thing or a project, you know, and that can become difficult to say yes to something like that because time is really precious when you're traveling and stuff. But um, usually if you have like an idea of why you want to do it, talking about that is always helpful. Sending examples is always helpful. Writing a cool letter is always helpful. You know, um, taking the time. So it usually does get to us. Sometimes there's a few channels, but mm -hmm. that's Cool, thank you very much. Yeah, I think yeah. like having a goal and sharing it, like or do you have a portrait series you're working on with specific kind of bands and you're doing this and here's some examples. Um, do you really love this band and you kind of want to help them make like a tour behind the scenes kind of zine and is this something you could collaborate on like you know they have a record coming out and might need new photos like a lot of people do just want to take the photo for the sake of saying i took this band's photo yeah but also right they do have limited amount of time and especially if it's like a promo photo that they're going to use for a record or for a tour like organizing however many people's schedules to be in one place for a photo can be really challenging so like if they're in your town, they have a certain amount of time they can use. So just like know what you want to do and be really clear with it and have examples and just be, be ready to go and just be, the whole point is you want to be respectful of that person's time. Yeah. Yeah. One of, one of the things too, at least when, when I'm making that decision, whether it's for my own, my own bands or when people want to do stuff here at the gallery is can this person communicate? Because it's like, if you're going to spend time with the individual, if the person isn't clear with what they're even asking, then the answer is immediately no, because you don't know what on earth is going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> what is going to unfold if you actually do something with this person. Yeah. <laughs> I've got so many stories of being like, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how the hell did that Why am I in a room on? with this person? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't play music on the scale that you guys do, but like, I do play some music. Like, Lisa's shot my bands, my my band, a couple of times. Like, you know, especially when you are a musician and like you you've been there, like you like playing both roles. Like, that helps us because we know, like, we know what our time yeah. is worth. Like, we know what it feels like when you're stressed out or anxious before a show, or you and your bandmate just got in a fight and you don't feel like taking a photo. So, like, know what you want to say and give me a good reason. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah. Uh, Gregory, Gregory Scranton, um, you can go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. Oh, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I was just curious, um, you know, like, uh, oftentimes I will go through the band's um, publicists and almost all of the time they'll say, um, first three, no flash. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you, a couple of you were at Lisa and Farah were talking about using flash. And I'm just curious, does the, does the venue go through the artists and get you permission? Do you get permission or do you shoot without permission? Oh, um, you know, honestly, it's, it's customary to do no flash. I mean, I think, I think there's a couple things there. One is that it can be so distracting to a performer. And yeah. I think that's the last thing that I want to happen, you know, um, but on a rare occasion, uh, you know, like we were saying at that one particular event in DC, Damage City, we were allowed uh, by the actual 
you know, the, the group that was putting on the event to photograph the flash just because it was so dark in there. Um, and I don't know if Far could speak to that a little bit more, but, uh, but typically when, when we shoot almost every single event at the venues that we shoot in DC, uh, it's many times, first three songs, no flash. Every once in a while, there's an artist that maybe really wants you to shoot more of the show. Are, they, are there something specific they want us to try to capture? Um, and that's always a nice trait when we can shoot beyond that because so much happens after three songs, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, yeah. it's rare, but it's nice. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, as, as Lisa said, like ignoring the venue rules is a really good way to never get allowed back in that room again. So like don't break <laughs> that relationship right. with the venue. Um, I mean, like if I did that when I was 20 shooting a 930 club, I would not be like 29 still shooting at 930 club. They'd be like, don't ever have this person back again. Um, and every time I go to that venue, I check with whoever's standing next to the stage. Hey, is it first three, no flash tonight? Because sometimes there's something in there, you know, like I shot chromatics there. Finally, I've like waiting to see that band my whole life, um, shot them. And it was like first three in the front. And then after that, you were allowed to shoot from the back from the mezzanine. There's been a few shows like that. Um, sometimes there's no photo pit and you need to get there early and um, like nobody can tell you on the phone unless until like the artist or the artist people let you know. But a lot of the shots that I have with Flash are be specifically because the artist has allowed or because a lot of punk shows in DC don't happen at traditional venues. So like there's shot, shows I've shot in living rooms and warehouses and grocery stores. Like they're not gonna, there's different rules and sometimes no rules. Um, but even if you are allowed to shoot, just still keep in mind, like with Flash, keep in mind that it is really distracting and it's not, you want to get the shots you want to get, but the night is not about you. And the second you make it about you, you're going to get in the way of the band doing the cool thing that you want to shoot. So just keep that in mind, even if you're allowed to do it. Yeah. Thank you. You, you know, um, Lisa just made a reference to something that I think maybe you guys can expound upon. And, and that was the three shot thing you like. Can you tell them about what that means and, 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 and you only usually can shoot the first three songs of, of a set? Or did um, I just do it? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, I think we were, like we were saying, I think a lot of that is also dictated by the artists. You know, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily just the venue. I mean, e even, even at festivals and Bonnaroo and whatnot, uh, the artists can change that. And it's kind of, I think it's, Kind of their decision but i think the idea of tuning is the idea of having all these photographers in a pit can be really distracting during a performance especially when you're shooting some of these bigger festivals and um i think they they want to allow them to have an opportunity to shoot but they also just really want to interact with the audience and i can see where you know they can put a limit on that uh so but yeah that just it does seem to be pretty common i mean then there's some artists like Google Bordello that wanted you to shoot songs like three through five for some reason, you know, <laughs> for whatever reason. I mean, <laughs> which has right. to be weird. and Anthem and they were like songs four through six, but it's because like the lights were basically off for songs one through three. <laughs> so they had like a good reason, but I'd never seen that before. And I was just like, interesting. All right, let's do it. I mean, it's better than when you do get one through three and then the first yeah. song and a half is super dark or just terrible lights and you're just like, okay, great. I get one song and I'm out. So, you know. Right. Yeah, it's very cool that the band, like, will go to the, you know, the lengths of saying four through six um, yeah. because of that. Really <laughs> Doesn't yeah. always happen. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's just one song. You know, you just got to hope. You just got to hope you get something if you're lucky. And then there's some artists that say, no photography whatsoever. You know, I was really hoping to shoot Lenny Kravitz this last, in the last year. Found out that not even the house photography, this was going to be at Wolf Trap, was going to be allowed to photograph. And it was for a press event. It was something I was going to write about too. And, uh, but for, again, for whatever reason, uh, he just, or maybe he had a tour photographer. I don't know. Uh, has a specific look, right. you know, feel. Yeah. Someone he feels comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So understandable. So I was very disappointed though. <laughs> I'm like, there could not be a bad photograph of him in my opinion. No, I know. 
right? <laughs> He was going mean, to impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Krauth, Krauth Honor. Uh, if you're there, you can unmute your mic and ask your question, Diana, or Diane, excuse me. Uh, it's Krauthammer, actually. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering um, just on, on the settings that, um, that you use for low light conditions, uh, specifically when it's uh, fast motion. I know that. Um, it, each, it varies depending on what kind of camera you have, what kind of lens you have, um, but just maybe like a general range would be helpful. <laughs> um, and my question was specifically for um, ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Yeah, I, I generally start between like, if, especially if, uh, if, I don't know if you're DC based, but if you're DC, yeah. so if it's like a, a house show or something like Rhizome where there's just it's literally house lights and that's about it. Like I'm already up to about 2000 um, to kind of start with and then like immediately check like how, or even beforehand. Cause I know usually with rhizome, I think I'm good. And then the lights go down. I'm like, no, okay. I guess I'm going up to four. Um, but that's generally where I go. And, and obviously for aperture, it's, um, you know, as, as much light as you can get um uh, without sacrificing you know that depth of field so um so that's where i start i don't know yeah i always start off at 1002.8 and go from there mm -hmm. i mean i think it really just depends on the venue i mean i think we've all shot at places where it has a lot of light and you're like great and people bring their own lights and you're like this is going to be great we can bump it down um, but I'm kind of like Chris as well. If I'm dealing with a venue that just is not great, um, I couldn't see myself really going lower than 2,000. Mm -hmm. so, I usually try to stick to like 1,000 to 1,200, but if I'm shooting with flash, then it's a different story, and I'm usually closer to like 600 or 800. So we've got uh, Chris Suspect, who is a photographer and a musician. Um, out there. And Chris, I have uh, unmuted you. Uh, I'm all, I've also allowed you to turn on your video if you so choose. Um, go ahead and ask your question. You're me. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh my oh, God. Yes. Yes. Who is this man in this chat? Unmute yourself. Wait, let us, he has to unmute himself so we can see this <laughs> on the back. I mean, all right. <laughs> I had that on for a work chat. Uh, Hi, sure. hey. Oh, <laughs> uh, <is> that, <laughs> shirt? Did that say I love vaping. <laughs> no, it says I love Vamo Becca. Oh, okay. <laughs> small, small, small beach town in Romania. Um, so yeah, I had a all of you guys are great photographers, and I've known several of you, some of you personally, but I've known a lot of your guys' work. But one thing that I found very interesting, and I was hearing more and I, I shoot music, but I shoot a lot of other things. But one thing I was hearing a lot last year when I was in Europe um, was that a lot of the bands that photographers, big bands in particular that photographers like to go shoot um, were slowly being denied access because a lot of these bands were preferring social media influencers to so someone with an IG account of like 20,000, 100,000 followers. who's not really a, a photographer but would give them photo access over somebody who is really a skilled photographer. And I wonder if seeing this sort of trend in, in music photography and has it impacted you guys at all? Um, this, this, for me to speak on it, I wouldn't say that I've actually experienced it myself, but I've talked to many people who have like just other photography friends that, you know, not necessarily just in concert photography, but any other avenue of photography, mainly because to be honest it's a business uh kind of move where as you have your your own you have a photographer that comes in and if they use uh work a photographer uses their work it's like double the marketing uh, exposure which is just not ideal for the ones that don't really care about socials that just want to really work on the art so personally i haven't seen it but i do have friends who you know lost jobs on those kind of opportunities yeah I mean, I've seen it at some festivals. There was a festival a couple years ago where like Migos was the headliner and like we got to shoot every other band except for Migos. And at that, that point it was only their touring photographer, but then like a couple of IG influencers 
I totally get the twerking photographer thing. Like you have a person you know really well, you trust them to get your angles. They know about that like one face that you make sometimes that you don't want them to catch. Like <laughs> Beyonce is a good example and her touring photographer is amazing. And I guess has become kind of an influencer because she's an incredible photographer. But I, part of me wants to really believe that like, it has to be like the PR agency making that decision and the publicist and not like the band being like, I only want influencers to shoot me. Sure. Like mm-hmm. I have not heard of a band wanting that. And instead it's like the team maybe asking for that or the publicist being like, this might be a move for you. Yeah, that, that's a management decision. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, Allison, how do you feel about that? Because you're I mean, in a band. Yeah. I've never heard of anyone talk about that. Mm-hmm. And it sounds really gross to me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I was trying to say like, I love people that can take real photographs because I really hate watching footage of myself or photos from a phone, but I'm 41, you know, I'm not 21. So I have an (laughs) eye for good work, you know, and I don't, you know, I, I prefer that. I feel like it has longevity and it has influence and it has beauty, but that's just me, you know, I can understand why a younger generation of artists would see this in an entirely different way. Yeah. But I, so I, yeah, we need to get someone younger on here to talk about this. <laughs> it's an well, I mean, I, I, I guess it comes yesterday. down, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it also comes down to, is the conversation about the art on, in camera and on stage, or is it about the marketing of the art in camera on stage? Exactly. And then when, when it goes to the, I mean, and both are important. Um, if it's a marketing decision, obviously you're gonna go with the person that has like half a million followers and it's gonna be, it's gonna look like whatever. Um, I don't have any friends, I don't know anyone that would prefer to have a marketing, like an influencer over a photographer. But I also don't have many friends in commercial music, (laughs) you know, where that makes any real difference, you know, like, I'm also 43. (laughs) So there's that. Confessional here. (laughs) Not only. (laughs) Yeah, I, I don't know. Santiago, Santiago, if you're out there, um, you can now unmute your mic and ask your question. What's up, guys? Love all of your work. Want to know? Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> Want to know? Hey, uh, just so wait, wait, hold on. Before right. anyone, before you get to speak, Santiago. Santiago is the individual that found me Autumn Banner that helps me run Lost Origins. So huge props to Santiago for being a vision, <laughs> for being a visionary. All right. Thanks, Jason. Um, want to know your favorite venue to shoot in DC and your most challenging venue to shoot. I guess it doesn't have to be in DC, just anywhere really. Thanks mm-hmm. again for the time. Can we pick the top three or four? <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like DC is a very interesting place uh, because we have access here that a lot of other photographers in other cities don't have. Um, not only do we have an amazing music scene, but we also have, you know, like the black cat where generally you can come in with a camera mm-hmm. and just shoot, you know, you just, you know, be respectful. Um, you have Comet where, you know, I've seen many amazing shows there and they're, the lighting there is a little bit more difficult, although it has gotten better, um, you know, but like, <laughs> it's like. That was very diplomatic. <laughs> No, but it, 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 clear, it really has. Like, I've noticed it over the years. No, 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 I know. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And also, like, Rhizome is a great place, but it's, you know, it's a nonprofit. And, you know, they don't, they have, their lights are literally track lighting from when it was a house. <laughs> um, and, like, I love small places. That's, like, you know, I just love small venues. And as far as to do, you know, with house shows, like, you know, that's, that's you know, it's difficult. But I think I've said my piece. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> Those are my favorites, I guess. Uh, I would say um, in DC, it would be people always think I'm crazy when I say this because the lighting isn't great here. But uh, my favorite is actually U Street Music Hall. 
Um, yeah. I don't know why, but I really just love the intimate kind of feel. It's kind of where I see a lot of upcoming artists and the people who come are just really hardcore fans of that artist. And uh, I don't know, the vibe is just always great. And it's, it's something where me and, you know, a friend can always just go and relax. And, and um, I don't know, I think it's more of the vibe. Um, it's more of why I like that that venue the most. And it's, you know, downstairs in a basement. Always been a basement guy. Always loved being in a basement. So I don't know. It's kind of, <laughs> love it. Yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's my favorite. I got to say, 930 Club, just, you know, always been my favorite in DC. It's just, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I I just love the venue. I love the size. I love the intimacy of it. Um, Grant, I do, I, I do love U Street. And I actually really like DC9. You know, it's so small and intimate. The light is not good, you know, but seen great. I love that small space too, but 930 is just, it's just perfect. I mean, and then of course, Anthem is, you know, got some great lighting and, and you know, big bands and everything, but yeah, my 30 club, they actually had uh, upgraded the lighting not too long ago as well. So um, it's, it's gotten even a little bit better. So I feel like it's very bright on stage there because they have that great carpet or something on the stage and it's reflecting like the sun. Uh, in your face oh awesome yeah. I do. So, <laughs> feel like, you know, if someone was holding like one of those shields at me, I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> the nine used to have a reflective stage. They painted it, it like silver, and it destroyed <laughs> me for and years. Like, there was so <laughs> stressful when that stage was reflective. <laughs> Just like I don't know if I pull down or close my eyes, and nothing's working. <laughs> Yeah, and like yeah. I've got these photos, which I, I loved every part of it, except the floor was just completely blown out. And you're yeah. like, hey, there's nothing I could do with this. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? A cloud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love DC9 as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And they've painted, or they put down Pergo or something on top if of it. They got a whole makeover. It's much yeah. better. They've stepped the game up. Yeah. 930 so cool. is like always in my heart a favorite. Like being there and seeing my first show there when I was like a week shy of 21 was the most exciting thing in the world. Like I couldn't think of anything cooler. Um, Black Hat is up there. There's also a harder space to shoot in because of the no flash thing. But like once you've been shooting there for long enough, like you get used to it, you get the hang of it, you know where your spots are. Um, like no venue has to be that hard to shoot if you keep going and keep practicing. And like you have to really think of every show as like practice. Like every show you're just like improving your practice, you're improving your work and you're getting better. Um, we do have a lot of tiny venues in DC that are houses, multi-purpose, like Hole in the Sky is like a multi-purpose artist residency, right? Like people live there and make art there, but they also have shows there sometimes. And that's really cool. Like I love a floor show and I'll generally like any sh place where I can shoot a show and the outcome is a photo where you can't tell who's in the band and who's just part of the crowd. So yeah. any space that can give me that is automatically my favorite. Yeah. I like the big old theaters sometimes. Um, what's it called? Lincoln next to Ben's Chili Bowl. Yeah. It can be really cool, but the rules for shooting there are like not my favorite. Well, no, of course. Like <laughs> I'm just talking about visual visually. visually it's very I like yeah. Yeah. Oh, and St. Stephen's Church. Like I've been looking at yeah. DC punk photos yeah. from St. Stephen's since I was like a child in Seattle and being able to shoot there and stand there and know like all that has happened and then that's still oh. happening is like, yeah. I live like a block away from there now. And I'm like, thank you, happy you're still here. <laughs> yeah. Speed question, this is the last question. Um, Blake is no longer watching, but I'm gonna ask his question. Um, Zoom versus Prime Lens. What do you guys use? Mostly Prime. Zoom. <laughs> Depends on the venue, but I would say mostly Zoom. Yeah. I use Zoom for punk gigs when it's a small space and don't have a lot of room, but if I'm shooting at like a 930 club or a Fillmore or an Anthem, I'll use Prime Lenses where I can get like that one almost like a like a like a hybrid of a portrait and like a live music photo like it's great for that especially when the light is really working for you um and the prime lenses are going to be good when the light is darker so if you know what you're doing you're going to have a good time with the prime lens but punk shows will do as zoom lens excellent yeah so i'm gonna let uh, jason have the last word but before we do that um oh it wasn't supposed to go there sorry uh, <laughs> 
Hold on while I zip through this. Um, thanks to everyone for, uh, for joining us tonight. I, I hope you got a lot out of this discussion. I, I sure did. Um, and, I, I'm, and I can't wait for the clubs to open back up because, uh, you know, I, I'm going to hold myself to, to my goal of at least getting out once a week and, and trying to shoot something. Um, be sure to, to, to go to our website and check out the rest of our program. Um, we've got some stuff uh, running through the end of June and we're adding stuff every week. So take a look at that. Um, this is a part of the night where I thank the sponsors. Uh, really appreciate their, uh, their support. Uh, they're paying the bills for us to be able to provide these free shows. Uh, Fujifilm, Tamron, Multiple Exposures Gallery, Peak Design, and Capital Photography Center. Um, We've got a great show coming up next week, okay? Staying with music. Um, uh, Vicki Toback is going to be presenting um, her book. She wrote a book and she's got an exhibit called Contact High, A Visual History of Hip Hop. A uh, great book, great exhibit. Uh, she'll have a couple photographers um, with her uh, discussing um, some of the early years of hip hop and some of the, the um, iconic um, uh, photo shoots that, that took place. She'll have uh, Delphine and, and Brian B plus cross. Um, be sure to, to, to go and uh, register for that. Jason, leave us with some yeah. words. Um, obviously thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, thanks Allison for dropping in and, and for fun. thanks for having me. Oh, having, awesome. having the, 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 the large scale rock opinion yes. um but for for everyone that's still there i mean it's a super messed up time mm -hmm. um it's completely odd to be sitting in my gallery alone on an ipad talking to everybody um but i have a feeling we will get back to normal soon it will be a new normal um but the one thing that has really helped me get through all of this is people keep on asking me, what have you been doing with your photography? I've been combing my archives and I've been listening to music. Those two things and riding my bike a bunch. Um, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so there's gonna be stuff happening. There's gonna be, you know, Chris who was on here earlier, his band, he has a book that came out where my band Zealot's going to play it whenever the heck we're allowed to go back into public. Far has got a book. Chris has got a zine. Check out everyone's stuff. Check out Allison's book too. Actually, we're going to bring Allison to DC soon. Yes. Do it. Um, it come? Um, yes. What's the name of the book, Allison? What's the name of the book? It's called Karma, but it's just car and then ma. But it comes out on, it comes out again, it comes out on Third Man in the summertime, like in a couple months. It's re-released, re re hard word to say, re-released. <laughs> I only, I only did 500 copies of the first one, so it was gone pretty fast, but I'm excited for it to be real. Cool. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. Anyone want anything? You guys know where to find me, us. Um, yeah. Party. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Lost Origins, when the world opens back up, it's uh, in Mount Pleasant, and it is one of the best galleries in the city of DC. Amazing shows for such a small, small space. Um, way to go! And uh, we'll be seeing you guys in, in the clubs. You know, you you now you now see these people, and you can um, go up and talk to them, and they won't talk to you because they'll be too busy. But you know. <laughs> Follow them on Instagram. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. Take care. Thanks so That's much to show. all of you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye, guys.